Hey, welcome back to the shop. Why not make some sign bars? I need a small sign bar that fits into my Y's and um, at the time I make one, I can make five or six because um, most, most of it is setup time and not machining time. Uh, I have a drawing of the sign bar here. It's pretty standard design. Two 10 mm rollers, hardened and ground. Not sure, maybe we'll use drill bushings because they are already hardened and ground. Or we will make some rollers from drill rod and harden and grind them. And the body will be made of this piece of um, 123 12 tool steel, pre hardened tool steel. And on the matter of the pre hardened, um, I use that stuff a lot. It's, um, it's called pre hardened, but it's only about uh, 33 Rockwell C hard. So when you take a file, it's still, you still can uh, file it with a normal. Uh, bench file. Um, it's not glass hard. It's free machining. It cuts really nice. It's very stable. It doesn't move a lot when you take out huge chunks of it. And uh, yeah, it's overall a very nice material. And um, <laughs> it's a neat material. Not everybody uses it. So I like it very much. Normally, this is a tool steel for mold making. Uh, it can be polished very well. It's very good to machine, it leaves good surface finish and yeah, it's tough, it's tough material. But it's not very hard on the tools. So that's what I use for most of my um, tools and jigs and you know, stuff like that that I make for my um, myself. And this time we make um, sign bars. Uh, the standard design is that you have one cutout here for a roller and one cutout here that has a 45 or more degree um, incline on it. The incline is there, so when you set it up at say 45 degree and you want to have your base level down here say this is level and you want to set your gauge block stack here that you have some uh, clearance over here so you don't hit the uh, sign bar with your gauge block that's the reason for this cutout it would be easier if we machined um, the step in from both sides like this then we could just measure the the um, the width of the step with uh, mics, uh, but then we uh, get into clearance problems over here with the gauge block stack up, and that's not good. But there is another way we can measure this very precisely, and I will show that to you when we are uh, ready to machine this. I squared up the block on three surfaces, one of the big flat surfaces and two long sides. Um, so I can hold it on the shaper more easy. I could have squared up the block on the shaper too, but uh, the milling machine is just faster. And uh, yeah, it's faster. So, okay, I changed my mind and we're going to hog away most of the material on the milling machine because a 6mm roughing end mill is way faster than the shaper. Um, I just laid out the lines, I put some diecam layout blue on there and I laid out the lines with the height gauge. So we can cut to the lines and leave about uh, point, point 0.2 millimeters or something like that on there so we can finish it on the shaper for the better surface.
Okay, I roughed out the, the slot and the slope. Um, I cut the slope just by it's 45 degree and I just uh, stepped over one millimeter and went down one millimeter and that gave me a very rough uh, slope. But majority of the material got removed so work on the shaper will go very fast. <laughs> Okay, right now we're set up on the shaper to do the finish cuts on the contour of the sign bar profile. First we will um, surface this um, down, then we will um, cut the lower bottom of, the, uh, of these two steps and then we will machine the most important surface which is the left side of those two um, of those two cutouts which will uh, define the position of the of the rollers of the sign board. Okay, I'm right now in the process of finish cutting the surface and I'm using a shear tool which I showed in my uh, shaper video. That one with the big uh, cutting radius and uh, enormous rake. Um, and just to show you the difference in finish, this side is cut with a, um, with a normal straight cutting tool or shaper tool. Uh, this one with a small nose radius and uh, the surface is cut with the shear bit and uh, yeah you can even hear the difference when I use my scribe and I scratch across this surface sounds really rough when I do the same here nothing And we even get some reflection in the surface. You see the brass scribe in there, slightly reflecting. And the surface finish is really good. And that's nothing to be ashamed about. Um, when you see the chips, they are nice. The chips are nicely curled up and that's an indicator for a good running cut and a well-cutting tool, of course. So, let's continue. Okay, I set up a, um, a parting tool from the lathe, a high-speed steel. I ground this myself to cut this shoulder. First, I will go down nine, nine millimeters and then I will traverse out to finish the bottom surface. Um, I have my dial indicator set up over here to help me with the depth and we're good to go. And I will feed the table up instead of uh, feeding the cross slide down or the top slide. Because the table movement is always square, the uh, top slide up here can be tilted and it's pretty sure out of tram. Okay, we cut the vertical wall and I decided not to outfeed. Um, I will cut the bottom of both the slots in, once, in one depth setting so they are exactly at the same height. And that's in, that are the only two important things. Um, from this edge to this edge we need exactly 50 millimeters and these two surfaces need to be exactly at the same height, but apart from that, we can do whatever we want.
Okay, well, we cut both of the vertical walls and I left some material on this side. But as these are two, um, two faces that are facing in the same direction, we cannot just measure them with, with the mic. Um, doesn't work. The easiest way to measure it is um, to, to pull out this reference surface and we will use this this is a, a well-used old gauge block and I checked that it's still flat and uh, accurate enough for this purpose. In fact, it just needs to be flat and clean. And we will get it against the vertical wall here. And take a small clamp and clamp the, the gauge block against the surface. And now see what we did now we extended the surface and changed the orientation now we can measure from this side against the surface now we can take a a second gauge block this is one of my good gauge blocks and we will press it against this surface and then we can measure this width and um, the the dimension we measure minus the thickness of this gauge block three millimeter will be the distance from the surface to the surface it's um, yeah it's not the easiest way to do it but um, I think that way we get an accurate result and this might get a bit uh, strange to measure because I have to hold the gauge block firmly in position and hold the mic at the same time and do the measurement at the same time. <laughs> um, I need the third hand right now. Okay, this is uh, 50, 50 something minus what? Wait. <laughs> Let's do an idiot check before we mess it up. Um, we get 52.7 with the calipers. And we get uh, 52.74 with the mic. And um, yeah, I'm repeating the measurement a few times just to make sure we don't get an, an error in there. Because it's pretty easy to over tighten the, the, the thimble and move the, the gauge block slightly. But when I take the measurement and I don't look at the at the dial I always end at 52.74 so now we know uh, we want 53 minus uh, 52.74 we need 0.26 millimeters uh, to go over in that direction Yes. And I set up the dial indicator on the cross traverse so it can move over exactly 0.26 millimeters. There we go.
go. Okay, you saw me take the second cut and uh, let's take a final measurement. I have, um, I secured the second gauge block with a, a big bass clamp here because the measurement was not very reliable. And yes, I put some brass shim between the clamp and the gauge block. So it should read now 50 plus 3. So take a measurement. Fifty three point uh, maybe five thousandths of a millimeter, so that's perfectly fine. Um, I would be happy with plus minus one hundredths of a millimeter because that's only a sign bar for the milling machine. Um, I would not use it on surface grinder, but for the milling machine, that's <laughs> uh, way more than needed. Okay, I got the um, the cutouts finished, and I also finished this um, sloped surface here. Um, I just ran a tool down 45 degree with top slide. Now we're going to take it out of the vise, clean it, and have a look. Okay, now we have this profile which already starts to look like a sign bar if we take two dial pins with 10 millimeter diameter which will re, um, use as a um, stand-in for the rollers it is a sign bar pretty pretty wide sign bar of course but it is one um, and <laughs> uh, you should make a product out of this um, sign bar stock. Just cut off how much you need. Um, we have the underside with the profile here finished, but these, this outer surface here and here is not finished. And I want them to be square to the rest of the profile so I can have a fence on the back here to align small work pieces. So now we're going back on the shaper, we're going to clamp it like this in the vise. We're going to align the inside of the slot square with the or level with the shaper and take a light skim cut off the surface. This is only rough milled so we have to do something to it anyway. Same on the other side. We're not going to skim cut this surface because we will do that when we're finished. Um, we will do each individual sign bar later. Oops. Okay, we start with um, this side. Just set it in the vise, make sure the fixed jaw is clean. Then we tighten the vise lightly onto the, the workpiece. We're not reefing down on it. Um, and now we're going to run an indicator along the inner edge here to see and to adjust it for squareness. For that we have to crank down the table. Take our indicator. And let's see if we can reach down here. And we are reading the inside and we have zero. Now I will move to the front and we're one hundredth of a millimeter. Uh, is that low? We're reading the back side, so Okay, 
this looks good. Clamp it down. Check it again. Five. Five. Yeah, also five. Should be good. Uh, as this will later be only 12 millimeters wide, um, this is not super critical right now. Within one hundredths of a moment, this is perfectly fine. And we're going to use the high rake, big radius shear tool. Again, as always, uh, one of my preferred tools on this machine. I surfaced um, both end surfaces of the sign bars on the shaper and now we're going to surface this side um, which will later be the side of a finished sign bar. We will um, um, mill the side surface then we cut off a slice then we um, we'll mill the created sawn surface on the big piece again, saw off another slice, so we end off so we end up with six individual sign bars which are all machined on one side. And I do this so I don't uh, it's easier to clamp it that way when I have the big piece of material uh, holding on to it. Um, and then the smaller ones can be clamped against a stop and also be side milled as for the surface finish and I'm using a nice coated six fluid carbide end mill brand new uh, <laughs> uh, eBay end mill this would probably be a 60 buck end mill so yeah not the cheapest option out there okay we're running it at 1000 rpm and we're hand feeding You saw me climb mill, go back and then do a spring pass. I took the spring pass to get any out oh, any flex in the end mill. Which you get. Or flex of the machine, which you also always get. Every machine is flexible in some way. Even a hundred ton horizontal machining center is flexible in some way. Again, physics don't care about the cost of a tool. Neither Scotty or machine tool builders nor machine tooling manufacturers can bend the laws of physics. So, yeah. Okay, I already cut down the first of the sign bars. Just clamped it in a bandsaw and sliced off a piece. And uh, we only need to mount the rollers. And we have a complete sign bar and machine, of course, the other side. But apart from that, this is a sign bar. Let's cut the next one. I can cut always two before I have to go back to the milling machine because the, sign, uh, the, the, the raw material has two sides and I milled both sides uh, square before cutting off. And you can see that I have some flat stock here to, to extend the vise out very close to the bandsaw blade. Otherwise it would be impossible to clamp uh, the part. It would be nice to have such a, ni such a nice small bandsaw palette as um, outside screwball Chuck showed. Um, he had a, a small steel plate or aluminum plate with a fence in the back and some tapped hole where he can clamp parts for the bandsaw with um, strap clamps. And I will build something like this. <laughs> a friend of mine just drilled and tapped a few holes into the base of his bandsaw. Also a very neat solution. So 
So we clamped it, make sure it's Great. Um, <laughs> I held it, wanted to hold it with the with the pliers so it doesn't drop down on the on the, um, on the floor, so it doesn't get dinged up. But the moment I uh, the the bands are cut through, I released to change my grip on it, and yeah, you saw it. But nothing happened. The part landed on on the stand, which has a plastic sheet on it, some polycarbonate. So here we go, another slice of sign bar. Now we can go back to the milling machine, resurface the, the faces and go back to the bandsaw, do it again until we have no material left. Okay, that was the last piece of the sign bar stock, which I cut just in half to make the last two. So I got six sign bar blanks out of this piece of material. Okay, there we go. Six sign bar blanks. Um, all machined all over except for one surface. And the top surface, which will be the reference surface, needs of course to be machined anyway, because this is only rough milled. Okay, I think we should come to an end for this episode. Um, in the next episode we will drill and tap the holes for the to hold the, the rollers in place. And we will machine the second side flat. We need to drill the holes um, for the side fence or to bolt this against something, like uh, against an angle plate. And we will drill and tap the rear. Um, oh, this is the rear end um, for a small fence. So when you have it at an angle, parts don't um, don't slip off. So we have a fence on the end. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Hope. Hope this is interesting. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.